Hi, this is Dean, and I am going to do a cello bow hold video for new students who are having trouble with the bow hold. And I'm going to start out by saying where the bow stick is going to be hitting your fingers. And you can see that I have marked on my fingers where the bow is going to hit the bow stick. And the thumb here is going to touch right in the middle two joints, or the middle two fingers is what I mean, and it's at the very first joint, so that is where things are going to be happening. And this is a bunny rabbit with big floppy floppy ears and two very very sharp teeth, nom, 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 which can go around and eat whatever you happen to have around that is nummy to eat. Nom, 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 nom. So you're developing the ability to hold on to something with your middle two fingers and thumb. Um, here's a $5 bill. Nom, 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 nom. My bunny rabbit happens to like erasers, but I think that they're all eaten up, so I'm going to have to come up with a ruler. All right, so a ruler is really good to eat. Um, and one of the reasons is because it has these holes in it. At least my ruler does. Maybe this is dating me. Maybe they still make these if made out of wood, right? And it has um, all the great numbers on it. Um, I think everyone does everything in metric in school, so I'm going to go with the metric side here. So right over here, you can see that I've got the number 26, and there is a nice hole there. I am going to put my thumb into that hole. Ah, ha, ha. And then I'm going to put the other fingers on the other side. You can see that I've got a nice bent thumb, and that I have about a finger width, maybe maybe a little less than a finger width between each of those fingers, and the first finger is out a little farther. If you bring all your fingers together like this, it doesn't take long before it's like, ah, the bow weighs too much, I'm going to grab it like this. And then you can't really play a cello. So, it will be important that your fingers are all spaced apart by, so that you can get a finger in each place. All right, and mine happen to be at those numbers there. Yours might be different. I'm imagining that if you're a beginning cello student, you are younger than I am. I'm 54. So you're probably going to be like seven or eight or nine years old. All right, so now you have this nice ruler. And the nice thing about a ruler rather than your bow is that the bow is really big and heavy and hard to hang on to. So we might as well do our up like a rocket. So I'll get back here. Here we go. Up like a rocket. Down like the rain. Round like a kettle. Round like the sun. Windshield wipers. Check your thumb. How is my thumb? Oh, it's beautiful. Of course it's beautiful. I'm the teacher. All right. Let's do that one more time. Did you notice that as I was doing this, my, my ruler was vertical the entire time? Why do us teachers like this kind of thing? I don't know if you can notice, but my wrist is moving. Ho, ho, ho. Isn't that nice? And you can see that my wrist is moving in this direction when I'm going and doing this. It is moving in a different direction when I'm going up and down this way. And, of course, windshield wipers is moving the wrist this way. So, the up like a rocket does all of the wrist motions that you need. So let's do it one more time because it's such a good idea. Up like a rocket. Down like the rain. Round like a kettle. Round like the sun. Windshield wipers. Check your thumb. Bravo, I have a good thumb. You should too. All right, if you find that that is too easy or you don't have a ruler, 
let us try something that's a little more slippery. A pencil. Um, this is the right kind of pencil. Somewhere around here I have one of those round kinds of pencils. I know, you're laughing because this looks like a round pencil and it's not. You can see that it is eight-sided, octagonal, octopus, stop sign. So that means that you can put a finger on one of those sides and the other fingers on the other. So there it is. All right, assuming you have one of these and you feel ready to, let's do Up Like a Rocket with a pencil. Up like a rocket, down like the rain, round like a kettle, round like the sun. Windshield wipers, check your thumb. All right, so the pencil is harder because it's slipperier, but it's also easier because it doesn't weigh anything or hardly anything at all. So you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Anyway, that is the bow hold and the bow hold exercises. You have bunny rabbit eating things. You have the bow hold. You have um, up like a rocket. Those are the three things we've done so far. And now I'm going to look at my notes. And um, I'm going to suggest that we do these exercises now with listening to the Suzuki CD of the cello. So I'm going to turn on my Suzuki CD of a cello player playing Taka Taka Stop Stop. And I am going to open up my elbow. So you can see I'm going like this. Like that. So let's do that. Grab your favorite um, bunny rabbit treat. Mine is going to be the ruler. And I'm going to turn on the CD. We won't go at the same tucka tucka speed. We'll just kind of go kind of slowly. Here we go. Down, up, down, up. Look at that wrist. My wrist is going up and down. Huh. My ruler is straight up and down. Kind of. looking at myself in the video and I'm, I'm really great. I should go into business being a teacher. Aha! Did you see my wrist as it was moving up and down? Ooh, la la, it was great. All right, so you could do all of the twinkles and that would give you plenty of time to do it. You could stop and do a bow hold in between. The thing about the brain is your brain thinks about the physical stimulus it's getting for a short time. It's kind of like, you know, you hear a loud noise and the loud noise continues on while it's annoying right away. And then you get used to it. And then once you get used to it, then you just kind of like block it out of your mind, right? So I don't want you to block out of your mind the bow hold. I want you to keep it in uh, at the front of your mind. So that would be a reason to do bow holds a bunch of times. It's like, oh, new stimulus. Uh, shake it out. Oh, new stimulus. There we go. We do it again. All right. And now for the next thing that we're going to do is going to be um, actually mimicking what you're going to do on the D string of the cello. I'm not going to sit down for this, but I'm going to stay standing and I have here a paper towel roll uh, and that is going to be my guide um, and if you happen to have well I have a dowel here yeah uh, and this is my favorite uh, this is a PVC pipe mm, yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh, I just happen to always seem to use PVC pipes around the place. And here's a dowel. And I have marked my dowel right over here. It's upside down maybe, but you can see my numbers there. That's where my fingers go. And on the other side, T for thumb. I should have written TH. 
And right over here is some uh, marks for tucka tucka stop stop. Yeah, I didn't do it right. Tucka tucka stop stop. There we go. All right. So if you don't happen to have a dowel and a PVC pipe, I would just say like, well, go out and get one in this age of COVID-19 when no one gets to go anywhere. So you, of course, will have to make do with whatever you have. Um, and so a paper towel roll would be good for that. Um, of course, if you were to use this ruler and have it go through here and stuff, that isn't very much of a motion to learn. But if you had a dowel, that would be a lot better. Uh, what is the purpose of this exercise? It is to get you to open up your elbow. Look at my fingers. Oh my goodness. Look at how they're doing different things depending on where I am. So that would be for the purpose to this exercise. You can also sit down at a piano if you happen to have a piano. Not everyone does. And as you're sitting there, you can just rub your, uh, glide your fingers along the white keys, and that would be the same motion as doing um, the D string on the cello. All right, so back I go. I am going to do this here. I've got my bow hold now, and I have my marks over here. And I am just going to go tucka tucka stop stop tucka tucka stop stop tucka tucka stop stop tucka tucka stop stop. Yeah, well, there are 24 tucka tucka stop stops in the first twinkle. So you should naturally do 24 of these. You can do them very slowly. And the nice thing about holding on to a dowel or having one of your siblings or parent hold on to the dowel is that now this hand does not have to hold on to everything. Like if I let go of the dowel, it's like, ah! And all of a sudden I'm back to the death grip of the bow. Not the right bow to hold. Okay. So, here we go again. Uh, I'm holding on, and I'm going to do about 12 of them. Here I go. Tucka, tucka, stop, stop. 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 Well, that would be eight of them, because I know that that is... The bread part of Twinkle, right? We have bread, peanut butter, jelly, bread, or ham and cheese, I suppose. All right, so you can see that my elbow was opening up a good amount as I was doing those. And instead, if I didn't hold on to this, I could be tempted to go like this. Ah. Whack, 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 and right? If your elbow does not bend, then your bow is like soaring off into outer space instead of staying on the D string, which is where it should go. So this is keeping the bow on the D string, if you can imagine that there is a D string. All right, and I think those are the main ex exercises I have for you. Yes, I didn't write anything more down. Um, I hope that this helps, and you can always uh, get a hold of me if you have questions about how you can come up with something that will work for you. All right, I hope this helps and I will see you later.